ES Audio. Hello, I'm Mark Blunden, and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, brain controlled soldier dogs. But first, remember Oumuamua, the strange cigar shaped interstellar flying object about a quarter of a mile long that zoomed past Earth in 2017 and mystified scientists about its origins? Some believe because it did not have the traditional characteristics of a comet, it could be some kind of extraterrestrial spacecraft. Now, researchers from the University of California, Berkeley, and Cornell University in the US believe as Oumuamua was being bombarded with cosmic radiation, it did actually expel a thin shell of trapped icy hydrogen gas to help with its acceleration and it was so thin that it was invisible to telescopes back on earth so where is Oumuamua now last seen in Neptune's orbit flying out of our solar system next the world's first 3d printed rocket made its launch debut but failed three minutes into the flight and crashed into the atlantic ocean the terran one booster by aerospace startup relativity space was made almost completely of 3d printed components which it was hoped would reach orbits 125 miles above earth but while the first stage of the 110 foot rocket successfully lifted off from florida and separated on schedule its upper stage appeared to ignite and then shut down sending it crashing back to Earth. But the company's undeterred, saying they've gathered enough data to show that flying 3D printed rockets is possible. Social media, and notably Twitter, has been deluged by deep fakes falsely illustrating the arrest of former President Donald Trump. The images, which were generated by artificial intelligence, show images including Trump fighting with police officers and in handcuffs wearing an orange jumpsuit as the legal heats turned up in the Stormy Daniels case. The deep fakes were uncovered by investigative website Bellingcat, who say they were created using Midjourney, which is an AI text-to-image generator. So how accurate are the Trump fakes? Well, mixed bag, as one illustration shows the former president with three legs. Now, the Australian army is working on technology that would apparently allow soldiers to control robot dogs via brainwaves and sensors inside helmets paired with Microsoft's HoloLens technology. What's being described as a brain robotic interface apparently uses AI to help control the kinds of four-legged droids that are becoming more prevalent in the tech world. The University of Technology Sydney team developed the system which features sensors stuck to the soldier's head that researchers say helps control motion. Sergeant Damien Robinson of the 5th Combat Service Support Battalion who tested the HoloLens headset described using the system as a visual concentration thing with the user focusing on a flicker inside the HoloLens helmet to instigate commands. Next, the science of stone restoration at Westminster Abbey where the coronation of King Charles will take place and it's coming up on the 6th of May. But if you want to visit afterwards, there's one caveat, you'll need to take your shoes off because the Cosmati pavement near the altar where the coronation chair is located is incredibly delicate after being restored. For the last coronation and possibly other coronations, the pavement wasn't on view. It was in such a deteriorated state that it couldn't be used, so it was always protected with carpet. So for the first time in kind of known history, this pavement will be on view and used for a coronation. So we get to see all the beautiful designs all the colorful stones that make up this amazing uh, work of art that's vanessa simeone westminster abbey's head conservator for the last coronation and possibly other coronations the pavement wasn't on view it was in such a deteriorated state that it couldn't be used the marble stone glass and metal floor was in such poor repair that it was hidden under a carpet since the 1870s before being brought back to its former glory in 2010 now it's no longer cigarettes behind the bike sheds because now data has revealed vape detectors in schools are being triggered up to 22 times every day. Vape Guardian sensors send a phone notification to teachers when even a whiff of e-cigarette vapour is detected and they're active in about 100 British and Irish schools. Teachers say they're increasingly concerned about the physical and mental health and safety of pupils who vape. A report by Action on Smoking and Health previously found the number of 11 to 17 year olds who vape rose from 4% in 2010 to 7% in 2022. 
Let's go to the ads. Stay there for more news from the world of tech and science. Plus, cancer cells set to be blasted into space. But why? Why not hit rate and follow in the meantime? Welcome back. Cancer cells will be blasted off and head into space as part of British scientific experiments to understand more about an incurable childhood tumour. Researchers from the Institute of Cancer Research are sending samples of diffuse midline glioma to the International Space Station to see how it spreads in microgravity. The scientists hope their study could pave the way to understanding more about the disease that led to the death of Karen Armstrong, the daughter of the first man on the moon, Neil Armstrong. Researchers want the experiments to be conducted in microgravity because they believe the conditions will allow their 3D cultures to grow to much larger sizes than on Earth. And finally, a fresh row has erupted over one of Britain's and the world's most instantly recognisable historic sites, Stonehenge. Now a new academic paper claims to debunk a theory that the 5,000-year-old Wiltshire Standing Stones were a solar calendar to help ancient Britain's track days of the year. Last year, British research suggested Stonehenge's giant sandstone slabs, which are called sarsens, represented a single day in a month each and track the alignment of the sun. Now Italian and Spanish experts argue that this assertion is based on what they describe as forced interpretations. However, the original author says this new paper is just ranting without a conclusion. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for the Leader Podcast, bringing you the latest news, interviews and analysis from the Evening Standard here in London. We'll be back on Monday at 1pm. See you then.